A big hello to all the students of SB Patel College of Architecture. I am architect Aditya Bora. On request of your honorable principal, Professor Mahendra Sunamne, I am happy to do this video presentation for all you students. Being a student of Professor Sunamne myself, I must say all of you students are very lucky to have a guide like him and a mentor like him. It is thanks to his rigorous teaching that I was able to establish myself in the professional world. And I'm sure that all of you budding architects will do exceptionally well too. I've now spent close to nine years in the industry and I now run my own practice. This presentation is on the evergreen topic and a hot favorite design for students, that is a five-star hotel. I have been fortunate myself to work as a design coordinator on one such project called Hotel Rosette House by the Bird Group. This hotel is located in the premier real estate area of Aero City, next to the Delhi airport. So I hope I am equipped in my own capacity to teach you the basics involved in the design of a five-star hotel. In this presentation, we will understand what constitutes a five-star hotel and what are the basic parameters of the same. Now to explain this to you better, I shall be sharing my own experiences and a few drawings and photos of the Rosier's House Hotel. And also I have referred to this wonderful report on design basics by Ankita Chaudhary, who's an alumni of the Gateway College of Architecture. It is a must read for all the students pursuing this topic for thesis. It's available on the website named Issue. Uh, it's something like SlideShare. And I have provided the link and the description in the slides that will follow. Now what is a 5-star hotel? There is no one definition of a 5-star hotel. It is deemed as a temporary accommodation space that provides you top-of-the-shelf luxury stay experience. These may include premium services like luxurious rooms, fine dining, great aesthetics and other facilities. Each and every detail is finely crafted. Right from the design of the furniture in your room to even the details of the drapery. Though there are certain requisites that you find common in most 5-star nowadays. These include rooms with quality amenities like gym, pool, spa and salon and a robust commercial establishment which includes fine dining, restaurants, cafes, banquet halls and retail shops. That said, let's understand the primary components of a hotel before we begin the design basics. The following are the main elements of a hotel. These are front of the house or FOH, back of the house or BOH, and services area and parking. These terms are the common terminology used both in the hotel industry and also by all stakeholders involved in the hotel construction. Front of the house is all the spaces that are actually visible and accessible by the guests. Front of the house is what earns the revenue for the hotel. These spaces include lobby come reception, the rooms, restaurants and bars, cafeterias, banquet halls, retail, gym, salon and pool area. All of you who have visited hotels before or are frequent users of the same must have observed all these spaces. Now back of the house or BOH you can say is the underbelly of the hotel. These spaces, as the name suggests, are not visible or accessible by the guests. It is accessible only by the hotel staff. All the hospitality related preparations and administration happens here. It is the core or heart of the hospitality services. These spaces include laundry, housekeeping, storages, admin offices, staff restrooms, staff lockers, etc. And then of course, like every complex commercial building, hotels have dedicated spaces to the MEP services like AC, electrical and plumbing. Now that we know of the spatial distribution, let's have a look at these spaces and their design criteria individually. Let's begin with the rooms. The primary component of any hotel are the rooms. It is the rooms that the guests experience firsthand and is the first thing they remember the most about a hotel. Rooms provide temporary accommodation to guests who may be tourists or business officials. The rooms form the major chunk of the hotel build-up area. 
Here you can see the layout of the JW Marriott Hotel in Delhi. Notice the green zones, which are the rooms, and you'll notice that they constitute the majority of the floor plate area. The percentage of build-up for room varies for different typologies of hotel. For example, motels or economic hotels, the rooms constitute almost 90% of the build-up area. Whereas in urban hotels, it is generally 70 to 75% of the area. Now the layout or distribution of the room depends on various factors like the availability of space, budget, design ideas. You can see in this slide three common layout criteria for rooms. First case is doubly loaded corridors. This style is the most used since it saves maximum space. Especially in an urban environment with smaller sites where the coverage and FAR restrictions also apply, this layout method is the best as it provides optimum usage of space. Case 2 shows a singly loaded corridor. This design is generally put to use if the hotel offers a great view. It could be a view of the beach or of the hills or other geographical features the place is famous for. The possibility of having views on both ends of the hotel is very limited and that's why the rooms are aligned to the side where the view is. Thirdly, you have the scattered design or organic layout where the rooms instead of being housed in a dedicated floor plate are scattered along the site. This is generally possible in resort hotels where there is an ample expanse of space and the design criteria is to enjoy the environment in an exclusive standalone room. You must be aware of the typologies. There are many types, but these are the main types and we've showed it to you here in the slide. The king room and the queen room, depending on the size of the bed being used. In the king room, there's the king size bed. In the queen room, a queen size bed is used. There are twin rooms where beds are separated. There are quad rooms that have four beds. And then there are the suites that come with more luxury features with an extended parlor or living area alongside the room. The presidential suite is the top of the line, ultra luxury and most expensive room available in a 5 star or a 7 star hotel. Generally a hotel boasts of only one presidential suite. There are no set rules for the design criteria of the suite. But generally the features include a bedroom along with a living area, a pantry, an office, meeting rooms, and sometimes also an attached swimming pool. Up until the 1970s, the reception area of a hotel was treated as, well, a reception area. That is, a small vestibule with a front desk and an entrance to the hotel. Then the Marriott Hotel chain brought about a revolution, which is practiced to this date. That is, to replace the reception with a lobby area. You may define lobby as this huge volume whose sole purpose is to create a dramatic entrance and an awe-inspiring first impression of the hotel. The lobby consists of an open and an inviting reception and a lounge with seating. The lobby area is generally made to go double or triple floor in height to create drama. It is backed by all the amenities a guest may require on entrance like admin room, bellboy room and luggage storage rooms. All in all, in today's time, the hotel lobby has become a signature of every hotel. Generally, the thumb rule for determining the area of a lobby is to dedicate 2.1 square meters for every room of the hotel to the lobby space. For example, if a hotel has 200 rooms, then its lobby area should be 200 into 2.1, which is equal to 420 square meters. Similarly, if a hotel has 50 rooms, then the area of the lobby should be 50 into 2.1 is equal to 105 square meters. This is because the footfall of a lobby is proportional to the number of rooms. More rooms in hotel mean more guests who shall be waiting for checking in and out and need a transition space to wait along with their luggage. And depending upon the number of people waiting at the peak hours, 
the size of the lobby can be determined. Apart from tourists, and in some cases even more than that, the hotel is frequented by business officials. These officials from all around the world travel for meetings and conferences and their hotel stay makes up a huge proportion of the hotel guests. Many a times you see a hotel in a nondescript area and you wonder if a tourist will ever go to this hotel. Well, sometimes such hotels are serving exclusively to business officials. It is therefore important that in such hotels an office complex is provided which has meeting rooms, conference rooms, working lounge and even private office cabins which a guest or company can book for themselves. It is far more convenient for an official to conduct his or her meeting in the hotel where they stay rather than traveling across the city. Design criteria of such a space is totally dependent on the owner's discretion. There is no binding building code or thumb rule or bylaw for such areas. This is the first floor layout of Rosiet Hotel that I worked on. We had discussed about an office complex within the hotel and that's what we have incorporated here. You can see the highlighted part. This is the business plaza with seminar halls, meeting rooms and private office spaces. You can also see in the photos that hotels also arrange for seminar and lecture rooms. Many MNCs have tie-ups with various hotels where they send their employees for stay because they know that such hotels have provisions for business meetings and seminars. Banquet halls offer space for weddings, parties and seminars. In this reference image of a banquet hall, you see that the ceiling is divided in bays. This is generally done with the intent of making the ceiling modular. A collapsible partition at the end of every bay helps to divide the banquet hall into multiple halls. Now it is easy to understand that this is done to create multiple halls as hotels may be hosting more than one event at a time. But let's also understand why one divisible hall is better than multiple halls. The figure here explains that halls placed across the layout would mean multiple entries and no single definitive path of circulation for the approach. The visitors will be confused and during an event, in this confusion, they will also disturb the everyday movement of people within the hotel. A single divisible banquet hall will have a single approach and a better visibility. The path of the guests to the banquets remains the same even if it is different events. In the other figure you can see how a collapsible track and wheel partition can be used to divide a single event space into multiple spaces as per requirement. In the Rosiet house for example, we had commissioned Hayfleet to create this kind of custom partition for us. Every good hotel boasts of restaurants, cafeterias and bakeries. The number of restaurants vary from hotel to hotel. For example, the Jumeirah Beach Hotel in the UAE has up to 20 restaurants. But generally every 5 star hotel has two kinds of restaurants. First is the all day dining. This restaurant belongs to the hotel itself. It is staffed by the hotel, staffed by the hotel cooks and servicemen and is functional 24 hours of the day. It also serves the buffet. It is the primary source of food for the guests staying in a hotel. So the next time you book a hotel room and get free breakfast banquet with the room, you know that you are headed to the all day dining. The other kind of restaurants are the specialized restaurants. Basically a hotel will give up a certain part of their floor space to a branded restaurant chain and invite them to be tenants and provide their services from the hotel itself. The restaurant brand moves into this space and they fashion the interiors themselves. The hotel does not invest in it. And these restaurants offer top of the line food. And these are the sort of restaurants that are frequented by the people of the city. Kitchen services for all these restaurants are quite demanding too. With sufficient cutting space, chopping space, baking space, washing areas, even dry and cold storage. 
we have discussed the different types of restaurants. You can see the roseate house plan here. The green zone is the all day dining, which is run by the hotel and was pre planned. Whereas the blue zone is the specialized dining, which is left blank in the layout, devoid of any furniture. This is because the tenant restaurator will design it as per their needs. All luxury hotels have these facilities like gym, spa, salon and pool. Generally these are clubbed together because these activities are related. Even in a resort style layout, these zones are generally kept together. The image of the pool is that of the roseate house. In this case all these activities are placed on the terrace. There is no hard and fast rule for the placement of these spaces except that they should be easily accessible from the rooms as the use of these areas is generally limited to the guests who stay in the hotel and not to the visitor from outside. Having understood the front of house spaces, let's look at the back of house. As I said earlier, the back of the house is the underbelly of the hotel area, accessible and visible only to the hotel staff. These areas are strategically placed to keep away from the view of the guests but still close enough to their rooms to cater to them. These areas include services like laundry, store rooms, janitor rooms, housekeeping and also the offices and lounge and restroom and changing areas for the hotel staff. Now we come down to planning all these spaces that we have understood in the presentations up till now. Let's begin with an interesting fact. Did you know that in any hotel, a car parking space is used maximum by the people who come to visit the commercial zone of the ho hotel more than the people staying inside it? See, that's because people staying in a hotel are either tourists or business officials while way more people come from within the city itself to access the commercial zones of the hotel like banquet hall for marriages or to enjoy the restaurants, cafeterias and even for seminars and lectures a big part of the hotel revenue comes from these commercial areas. So understand this well people staying in a hotel are guests while people visiting the hotels are visitors both are equally important. Spaces in hotels are therefore divided as per the guests and the visitors. And that is the key to understanding the planning of a hotel. Have a close look at the images of these hotels. If you look closely, you will notice that the ground and first floor look higher than the rest of the floors. Also, it is clearly apparent that the floors above house the rooms. The reason behind this is quite simple. All the commercial zones like banquet, restaurants, retail, etc. are placed on the ground and first floor because they demand quick and easy access by the public and not necessarily the guests living in the hotel. This you can see in the figure also. The rooms are a semi-private space used by the guests and require exclusive circulation and some form of privacy too. This flowchart is an excerpt from the thesis report that I had mentioned to you earlier and the source is provided in this sheet. The flowchart clearly and comprehensively displays the spatial distribution of a hotel. At the center of the flowchart, you see the lobby space which acts as a distribution zone. The top half are the public areas which can be accessed by both the visitors and the guests while the bottom half is the semi-private zone which is exclusive to the guests only. The top half contains both offices, commercial spaces like banquet. You can also add to it other spaces like cafe, bars, retail, auditorium, etc. They have not mentioned it here, but they also apply. Now for a visitor who has come for, for a meeting with hotel staff or visitors for a marriage function or seminar, they can easily access these areas either from the hotel lobby itself or better even from outside the hotel. Entrance into a hotel is not a must to access these spaces. The idea is to prevent visitors from walking deep into the hotel spaces 
and disturb the private zones. On the bottom left are the guest rooms and facilities provided to the guests like gym and pool. The guests may have to travel a bit more via passages or lifts to reach their zone but that is deemed okay considering they are staying inside the hotel and have paid for it unlike a visitor. It is interesting to see the placement of the restaurant which like lobby is centric to this flowchart because restaurants be it an all day dining or a specialized restaurant they have to be accessible to both the visitors and the guests at the same time with such a layout the restaurants are able to cater to the public which comes from the outside and are also easily available to the guests who stay in the hotel and need to access the restaurant from inside for their meals also in the bottom half see and observe how smartly the boh or back of the house services are interconnected to the rooms and the kitchen only without connecting to or disturbing any other space of the hotel this is the function of boh to stay hidden from the outside but well connected from within room services like housekeeping laundry can easily cater to the rooms because they are closer to the rooms also if a room orders food then the boh or back of the house can fetch it easily from the kitchen area because it is centric to both the rooms and the kitchen overall it is a very cohesive flow chart that binds all the spaces perfectly and this should be your reference to plan all the hotel spaces this is the plan of trident hotel krukam and this plan nicely explains the flow chart we just discussed you can see that the hotel is clearly divided into two zones the quick access public zone on the right which houses the cafeteria bar banquet restaurants and the private area to the left housing the rooms and the pool these two spaces are divided by a garden acting as a buffer space also please observe that the front office and the cafeteria seen next to the water body have an access from the outside meaning a visitor need not enter the hotel lobby to enter these areas the banquet bar and restaurants are accessible from the hotel lobby and also please observe they share a kitchen now i don't have access to other plans but it is quite apparent and even you must have realized by now that the restaurant and the kitchen we see in the plan are not the only ones servicing this hotel for sure there has to be another restaurant along with the kitchen and also the boh service in the building to the left which houses the rooms because otherwise it would be a violation of the flow chart and that would also mean that a caterer would have to walk from bulb building block to another to serve food so now you understand the importance of this zoning flow chart the design for the hotel may vary but the zoning and planning happens as per the flow chart we just discussed Another healthy habit one can follow during the zoning is to try and create maximum usable volume on the facades. You can see in this plan how on the left side figure the lifts placed at the center maximize the usable space on the facades whereas in the right hand side figure facade space has been reduced because of the lifts. Try and recollect all the hotels and even malls for that matter where you have seen lifts placed central to the layout my bet is a lot of them especially if there were capsule lifts with glass front then without a doubt they were centrally staged lifts you see the facade area is a premium commercial space and fetches a lot of revenue it is really important that you keep in mind the best interests of the financial gains your design can deliver the services are the veins that pump blood into the building to keep it running there are umpteen number of services in a hotel because the usage demand is so varied when designing a hotel it takes all the effort to coordinate with various stakeholders involved in services 
and come to logical solutions without overlapping or compromise in the design. A well-organized service is a must. So let's have a look at a few of these services. There are the firefighting pump rooms that provide water to the overhead tanks and subsequently to sprinklers and fire hoses. Same fundamentals apply to all other types of water supply to toilets, kitchens and pool. Electrical panel rooms that act as a bridge of electrical supply for every floor, also for control and maintenance of supply. Then there are the boiler plants. No good hotel has a geyser in the toilet. Hot water supply is provided 24 7 which is made possible with the boiler. In fact, in western countries, the use of boiler in any building, even residential, is a common norm. Then there are the air handling units or even chiller plants in many cases and the treated fresh air units for the massive demand of air conditioning and exhaust system in a hotel. More often than not, the basements act as a mixed usage area for housing the parking and the service stations like pump rooms, boiler rooms, tanks, etc. These rooms are the source of the MEP services from where they are channelized to the whole building. The basement is preferred for this allocation because as per general bylaws, the basement cannot be dedicated to any other form of use except services and storage and parking. Sometimes a complete floor plate of the hotel of a building can be dedicated to the services. In this case, it's called a service floor. The services which may lead to the release of smoke or hot air like generator sets are placed on the roof. Also, outdoor units of all ACs may be placed on the terrace to avoid spoiling the facade. Building services is something you will learn more and more during your practice. But since you are students, there is just a few things to keep in mind. Firstly, whether it is plumbing, electrical or AC service, every floor will have a dedicated station to these services. These stations act as a link between the source of supply to the deliverable end. These stations are not the back of house, but they need to be concealed well too and also easily accessible by the serviceman. Secondly, it is in the best interest of all that these stations are stacked over each other. That is, they are aligned. For example, how does water reach to the top of a skyscraper? It's because every few floors, there is a pump station that further pumps the water up to the top floors. But say, if these stations are not aligned, then firstly, the rerouting of the water will cause the pressure on water to reduce. Secondly, it means that extra expenditure on materials and resources to navigate the pipes so that correct alignment could be formed. It is a very expensive venture. Alignment of stations is very important. Thirdly, planning of the services has to be pitch perfect because if there are any changes after the structure of a hotel is ready, then it is very difficult to reroute the services. In our own case, we had to do multiple compromises with the structure by drilling sleeves through the existing RCC work in a last minute bid to accommodate few changes. In your planning for your submission or thesis, it is important to keep these factors in mind. You need not show the machinery involved in your layouts, but understanding the basics of services and following the above three rules will keep you in good stead and also save you from the external ser externals service related by our questions. This comes without saying that you have to adhere to all the building bylaws, codes and fire safety regulations. Building bylaws such as build up, coverage and FAR differ as per city and as per local authorities. Also many a times the bylaws also dictate the percentage of commercial activity that you can or cannot exceed. Like in our case of Rosette Hotel, the commercial activity buildup was capped at 20% of that of the total hotel buildup. Some of the important building codes also to learn from hotels are the number of toilets and WCs, sinks and urinals, the number of parkings, the width of the passage and roads, 
the turning radius for roads and ramps and also handicap services like how many handicap rooms, toilets and the provision for entry ramps. Environment friendly provisions in a building are the need of the day. Nowadays, apart from LEED certification, even the local bylaws have been amended for hotels to incorporate and practice green architecture. I'll explain a few of these. STP or sewage treatment plant is an underground plant consisting of a tank divided into compartments. It is here that all the soil water is processed to produce clean water. Mind you, this is not drinking water, but this water can be rerouted to provide water supply to WC systems in the toilet or even for landscape watering. Similarly, there is rainwater harvesting mechanism, you must be aware of this, where water from roofs and balconies can be channeled to a reservoir and put to use whenever needed. In case of Rosiet House Hotel, it was a bylaw compulsion for us to provide both these units with water storing capacity equivalent to at least one day's worth of the total hotel water usage. Apart from this, it will be great to introduce solar panels in the design for an alternate electrical source. No time is better than now to practice this, since the government is encouraging the use of panels by providing lots of subsidies. Last but not the least by any stretch of imagination is the aesthetics and design features of a hotel. Now that I leave to you. I can only teach you the technicalities while you can inspire us through your design. Read a lot, study a lot of designs, practice a lot through trials and errors and I assure you with some dedication and some inspiration you can produce some great work. All in all, Hotel is a very comprehensive project that covers all possible aspects of architecture. Working on a project like this will equip you with all around knowledge and you will feel very confident as a professional. It is also a great choice for thesis project, but you have to know what you are doing and you should be absolutely dedicated to the design. Otherwise, the juries are very well versed in this topic and can question you on numerous aspects of the hotel for which you need to be prepared. Presenting this wonderful topic to all your students was great. In case any of you need to reach out to me for any guidance, I shall be most happy to help. I thank Professor Sunamne for this lovely opportunity. Thank you and please take care of yourself.